Hi everybody, today we are going to talk about some properties of limits and how we can find um, limits using direct substitution. So here are some basic limits and essentially um, for these basic limits we can use direct um, substitution to f evaluate the limits. So you can see that here, the limit of f of x as x approaches c is just f of c. So a few basic limits I definitely want you to be aware of. Um, constant functions, um, the limit of 2, uh, the limit of negative 5 is always just going to be whatever your constant is. We're, this is irregardless of what x is approaching because we do have that um, horizontal line. Uh, identity functions like x, um, here we're just doing direct substitution. The limit of, of x as x approaches c is just going to be c. We can also do direct substitution for power functions such as this. Notice we're just um, substituting c. And for rational functions, however, you do need to make sure that we're not taking a square root of a negative number, so it has to be a real number um, when we substitute. Um, also trigonometric functions, we can use direct substitution for. However, as you guys know, um, there are some uh, trig functions that have asymptotes and therefore they have domain restrictions, so you need to watch out for that for um, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. So of course, if you are trying to do direct substitution and you end up with um, something that is undefined, then this is not the way to go. But most of the time it will work out pretty nicely. All right, now I want to talk about some properties of limits, which we're going to practice today. So we're, um, we're going to call uh, the limit of f of x as x approaches c l and the limit of g of x as x approaches c k. So we have two separate functions. And the idea is um, when we have more complex functions, if we can break them down into some of our basic limits, we can use these properties to help us find the limit. So the first thing to look out for is um, if you have a function with a scalar multiple. So essentially, if you have something with what could be called a GCF, we can essentially factor out that scalar multiple, find the limit of the remaining function, which it would be L, and then multiply the limit by your scalar multiple. Um, if you have a summer difference within your function, um, you can actually treat each term as a different function, find those limits individually, and then add the limits together. So you could find the limit of f of x, find the limit of g of x, and then add your limits. Um, the same process applies for a product or a quotient. Um, find ways to take your en entire function and split it up into different parts, either using a sum, difference, product, or quotient. And lastly, um, there is a power property. If you have a function raised to a power, you can find the limit of the function and then raise the limit to the power. And oftentimes, that will make it a little bit easier to evaluate. Okay, so here we have a few problems where we could, in fact, just do direct substitution with all of these problems, but we're going to go out of our way to use the properties, just so you've seen them with a more basic problem, because in the future, we're going to do these same properties with more complex functions. So this first one, you can see it's a power function. So we can actually remember, find the limit of this and then raise our limit to the power of two. So I, can, I could rewrite it like this, the limit of x as x approaches four, and then I can find that limit and square it. That's one of the properties. The limit of x as x approaches four is just four, and then four squared is 16. Notice this is the same result that we'd get if we just substituted it and did four squared. Here, um, just to show you how that scalar property works, 5 is a scalar, so you can kind of think of it as like factoring out your scalar. Then we can take the limit of x as x approaches 4, that remaining function. That limit is, of course, 4. It's just direct substitution for the identity function, and 5 times 4 is 20. Once again, exactly what you'd get if you just did direct substitution. Here, we can use that quotient property. Um, instead of finding the limit of this entire function, well, let's find the limit of tangent of x as x approaches pi, and then find the limit of x as x approaches pi. So we're going to find those limits separately, and then we're going to divide those limits. So the limit of tangent of x as x approaches pi is 0. The limit of x as x approaches pi is pi. So our overall limit is just zero. 
All right, for part D, this is just going to be direct substitution. This is a radical function, so we can just directly substitute 9, and we get 3, as long as we're not um, substituting a negative number for this problem. Here you can see we actually have a product of two different functions, so we can find their limits separately. We can find the limit of x as x approaches pi and multiply it by the limit of cosine of x as x approaches pi. So the limit of x as x approaches pi is just pi. We can use direct substitution there. And we can also use direct substitution here. It's one of our basic um, limits. Limit of cosine of x as x approaches pi is negative 1. So our overall limit is negative pi. Okay, in this last one, yes, we could just substitute 3, and we know that 7 squared is 49. But let's actually break this down using two of our different properties. Let's use the sum property and that power property. So for the sum, we can find those two limits separately. The limit of x as x approaches 3, and the limit of 4, a constant function, as x approaches 3. We can find those two limits separately, and then square the sum of our limits. So the limit of x as x approaches 3 is just 3. The limit of 4 as x approaches anything is just going to be 4. And then we can square the sum of our limits. So now we get that same result as we would get by just using direct substitution from the beginning. All right, go ahead and pause the video and give these a try. Um, please um, try to use your properties. Try to go out of your way to see if you can use your properties. All right, go ahead and check your work. Here, even though that, that one-fourth is already a constant, I even went a little bit further and used quotient. Here we have that power property, quotient property. This is just direct substitution. We have our product property here, and we use the difference and the power property here. All right, so here this is, this is just a generalization, just to kind of save you some time. Essentially, if P is a polynomial and C is a real number, we can just always know that direct substitution will work. The limit of P of X as X approaches C is just P of C. Um, and then down here we can see that it's really the same um, idea for any rational function, R of X. Um, you can just use direct substitution as long as your denominator does not equal zero. So as long as when you substitute your C value, it doesn't um, give you an undefined value. All right, so let's try a couple problems um, using direct substitution. Um, essentially, all you really have to do is make sure that you are able to do direct substitution. So if I look at this, this is a polynomial function, so I know that it is always okay to do direct substitution. So I would literally plug in negative 1 here, here, and here, and we should end up with negative 6. Because here we have um, positive 1 minus 1 minus 6. Now let's look at this next one. Uh, for this problem, uh, we need to check the denominator because remember, we need to make sure that our um, our resulting value is defined. So if I plug in um, x equals negative 1 here, my denominator is not 0, so it's okay to do. So here, if I substitute negative 1 here, here, and here, we would result with negative 4. All right, and last one, same thing. Let's check the denominator. If I substitute negative 1 right here, my denominator is not 0, so I will get something that is defined. So I substitute um, negative 1 here, here, and here, and we should get negative 3. All right, go ahead and pause the video and give these last three a try. Okay, so once again, um, just check whenever you have a rational function to make sure that your denominator will not turn to zero when you make your substitution. Other than that, you just plug it in and simplify. All right, that is all for today's lesson. Thank you for watching.